Hi guys, I'm Shmi and today I'm out filming with something a little bit different. This is the Vauxhall VXR GTS, the UK version of the Holden Gen F GTS from Australia. Holden being the sister company, of course, to Vauxhall, part of the GM umbrella. And there's a bit of a story to how this came about, because as you might know, I was off to Le Mans earlier this year with Corvette, with the Corvette racing team, and I test drove the Z06. And of course, Chevrolet, also part of the GM group, meant I made an introduction later on to the PR team from Vauxhall and thought and well they asked why not take this out and have a look at it and there's a particular reason for that because when I get to the numbers and performance statistics behind this it's up there in the sort of supercar level from a car that costs just under £55,000 as the base list price it is basically the least expensive way to get into the 500 brake horsepower plus club in fact it's nearly all the way up to 600 this thing has 585 PS that's 576 brake horsepower 545 pounds foot of torque that's 740 Newton meters. So to put that into perspective, this has more power than a Ferrari 458 Italia, more torque than the McLaren 650S, and it only costs £55,000. This particular one has an auto gearbox, that's basically the only option. The GTS spec package, incredibly well equipped. But I'm going to take you around, show you the car, talk a little bit about it, go for a quick road test, and uh, show you around the interior. So firstly, on the outside, of course, it starts life uh, based from the Holden Commodore, Australian manufacturer Holden. Um, it's the only place in Europe that this car is sold in the UK under the Vauxhall badge, of course, sister company to Opel. Big web of different companies. The car is developed by Holden Special Vehicles, which is sort of independent to Holden. a 6.2 litre engine v8 supercharged v8 the same engine as the camaro zl1 um, like i said it's, it's creating nearly 600 horsepower to cool the engine there's a lot of work that's been done to open up the front end vents sort of space for the air to come in through to the coolers This particular car obviously finished in the white with the sort of black contrast trim parts. Quad exhaust system, large exhaust tips down at the rear, and a wing placed onto the rear boot lid. The XR badge, or the XR8 badge of course. Supercharged LSA engine. I come and show you on the inside. You'll have to excuse me for the wind here, it's a pretty windy day today. Oh, it's locked, of course, keyless system, key is in my pocket, press the button, pull the door. Inside there's a new look to the interior with the sort of suede-like finish with the carbon fibre trim, redesigned throughout. Which is not too bad, and the seats are exceptionally comfortable. Take a look at the rear. You'll see it is quite a large car, but there is plenty of room back here, lots of comfort. This car basically sits alongside the sort of E63, BMW M5 kind of um, power and sort of size, I guess, like for like comparisons. Except with the big difference that it's £20,000 less money. So it's not necessarily trying to be one of those other two cars, it's trying to be its own thing, sitting in this price bracket, bracket beneath. But let's start it up and firstly hear how this V8 sounds. It's a keyless system, so you don't need the physical key, but we have it here, it can be in your pocket. Foot onto the brake and press the engine start button here. Needle sweep on all of the dials, the central display lights up, as well as the HSV logo on this standard eight inch touchscreen. We're in tour mode, but the car has a bimodal exhaust system. So if you use the driver mode, you could probably hear it getting slightly louder as I went into sport mode there. Let me just turn it back to tour and back into sport. There are further, there are further driving modes as well I'll get to, but that opens up the exhaust system and what allows us to hear it. It 
doesn't sound bad at all then. For now, I'm going to jump in and go for a little first drive in the car and offer you some feedback on the experience. And then a little bit further on in the video, I'll show you around some of the interior controls and systems in a little bit more detail. Here we go then, getting underway, and we're initially in the completely standard settings mode. So we're in tour mode, which you can control through this, the driver performance style. Has a number of different driving modes, tour, sport, performance, and track. And as you go up through each mode, you change a number of settings, including the ESC and traction control settings. When you reach sport, and from there on, you have the bimodal exhaust valve, so the exhaust system is significantly louder. It changes the steering feel, and if you have a manual car, it introduces launch control as well. This car has the six speed automatic gearbox but there is also a six speed manual gearbox you can have with this car which possibly might fit slightly more in with the character it's an, op it's an optional extra and basically the only optional extra on the gts spec is to have uh, the automatic gearbox but that obviously suits certain people so driving now in tour it's a very comfortable ride the seats are exceptionally soft and supportive and comfortable and just they just work really well it's obviously quite a, a sort of rawish kind of car you've got quite heavy steering feel um, something to point out, the indicator stalk is on the wrong side. Well, actually, it's on the right side, not the left, um, which is because Vauxhall being British um, and the only European market that is making this car, um, obviously, you want to keep your left hand free for the manual gear stick, so the indicators and lights are on the right with the wipers on the left. That's the way it was traditionally done, but not so much um, recently. Now, of course, we have a very big V8 um, in this car, so it would only be right to put this into sport mode and hear how it sounds. So just one quick twist of this, it gets a little bit louder, got slightly more rumble. And you can also push the gear stick to the left to have the gearbox in sport mode as well. And it lets us know on the, uh, on the gearbox and then put the foot down. You can hear the supercharger just coming in at the top end of the rev range there as well the little sort of whine it makes but the v8 sort of roars away and screams a bit as you go and this is a 55 grand car that sounds pretty good now performance figures 0 to 60 is 4.1 seconds top speed is limited to 155 but 4.1 seconds it wasn't very long ago that the four second sort of target was the supercar target that was what you know you wanted your ferrari 360 to sort of achieve uh, and now you're getting it in this massive sort of almost family saloon car i guess you've got a massive boot at the back comfortable back seats three seats in the back and um pretty relaxed place to be when you're down in the sort of chilled out modes now if you do go a little bit further on the driver mode toggle i notice the car gets a little bit excited and it's very very happy to play around a little bit i'm not desperately keen to do that myself right now but i'm certainly noticing that the car is ready to do it um, there are lots and lots of different dials and controls that you have in front of you um, all set up to show you everything. It even has a little graphic to show you the uh, angle you're at, but I'll get to that a little bit further on. So if you're uh, drifting the car, you can see up to, up to 100 degrees um, what your angle of, uh, angle of slip is. Um, but inside and driving experience point of view, heavy steering feel, but very direct. Um, enjoyable, engaging drive, even without going fast. It's a perfectly nice car to drive, probably more so than I think you'd expect. Um, like I said before, it's not trying to be that sort of luxury saloon that the BMW and the Mercedes go for. Uh, it's trying to create its own sort of positioning for somebody who sort of wants a bit of fun for less money, basically. Um, it has a lot of technology. Um, the collision warning, so if you approach the car in front of you too quickly, let's say you'll forget to brake, um, it starts beeping away and flashing up on the head-up display. Again, another piece of brilliant technology this car has. Um, very nice head-up display view. You can turn on here the uh, lane guidance, and if I drift over the white line there, you can hear that um, it beeps away to let you know. Um, so all the sort of clever technology features you want from a car, you know, it's got all the cruise control and Bluetooth, and it's got this big touchscreen interface as well in the center. So lots of um, little sort of things to play around with. Um, and obviously you've got this fairly nice system with everything that I'm going to run through in a little bit, but it's got the EDI display which is where you get into uh, all the sort of logging of settings and data and information and bits and bobs. This display is really something I absolutely love. I hope you can slightly see this here, but it shows, well, for the passenger or anybody else in the car, the current revs, how hard I'm pressing down on the accelerator and brake pedals, the gear selection, all sorts of different bits of information. That's, that's really, really, I guess, nerdy, but quite good fun to have it there and be able to see all of that. Um, 
It's got other stuff I think I haven't mentioned, heated seats, um, everything you sort of would want in the luxury and sort of convenient side on a vehicle like this. I've put the paddles in manual just so we can get a bit more noise from the car. Not afraid to shout a bit, is it? <laughs> I like that downshift, like that sort of r massive kind of rumble explosion kind of thing that goes off. It's quick, there's no question about it, it's very quick. I think that's just what's so surprising about cars. How do you, how do you get this much performance at this point, this price tag in a car that equally can be so comfortable to just drive around in? Um, and perhaps that's, I mean, that's the way the cars are going and that's why um, the Vauxhall PR team would keep to get me to take this out for a drive. Um, I think it's pretty cool actually all around. Um, it's obviously um, got quite a sort of image that is going to appeal to some people and not appeal to other people. Um, but from a driving point of view, it's not a bad car to, to be out driving in. I like coming to this road to drive cars because it's a particularly challenging one just in terms of how bumpy and rough it is. So it truly separates out anything um, that, you, that isn't properly dialed in, I suppose. But this is set up quite nicely for it. Given that this is a review, I should run over quickly some of the negatives with this car. So the fit and finish, uh, it's perfectly satisfactory, but it's not up there with the standards of Mercedes and BMW. That's why it's less expensive, of course. It has a slightly funky driver's door mirror, which is super zoomed in, a bit like cars in America are. Um, so rather than the normal sort of British extra zoomed out view where you can see stuff, you find a lot of, lot of cars end up in your blind spot on this side, so you have to look around a lot. Although you do have lane uh, monitoring to help out with that, um, so it will sort of flash up on the, on the mirror itself if there's a car in your blind spot. But I always find that you still want to double check. You can't necessarily trust those things completely. From a visibility point of view, it's pretty good, but you do have a giant ironing board in the review mirror. So when there is a car back behind you, um, sometimes it can fit, it can fall sort of exactly um, where it's right behind the sort of thick bit of the, um, of the uh, rear wing. Um, certainly hard to sort of make any contact or see if the driver behind is what, what, what's going on. Um, but these are all pretty minor and insignificant things in the grand scheme of it. Um, there's a solution to each one as well, I guess. Early driving impressions were not what I expected at all, but now let's take a proper look around the car and talk a little bit more about it. Things like showing you the engine bay, so let's go straight to that. Jump in and take a look at the 6.2 litre V8. So, release it. Hopefully find the catch, see if I can get this first time. It's in here, I can feel it, there we go. So unlike most modern engines, you can actually see quite a lot of this. The LSA supercharged V8. Almost wait, makes you want to sort of reach in and start playing with things, although I probably would not be the best person in the world to do that because I wouldn't really know what I'm looking at. But it's quite cool how much of it you can see with the nice red cover over the top as well. It's a good start. 576 brake horsepower come from this thing in this car. It's awesome. Close that back down. So as we look around the front, you've got the sort of contrast with the white paint and all of the black components. Massive air ducts to pull in air to keep that engine cool through the central grille, the sort of piece that's been divided into two in the centre for the main sort of upper grille with the uh, centre bar. Obviously you've got the GTS badge down here. I apologise again for the wind here. Uh, we've got the projector headlights, uh, the larger wheels which are fitted on Continental tyres, 255 at the front, 275 at the rear. The tyres are chosen for their performance in both wet and dry because obviously we are in the UK after all so the Conti Sport contacts are used. They look pretty good with the uh, red brake calipers. Six piston at the front, four at the rear. Little grille here. Feature. Um, I'll come around to the back, I'll show you in the boot. There is no physical button to open the boot on the outside but there is a button on the driver's door or via the key. I'll pop that up. And as you can see, decent storage, as you would expect for a car in this class. No problem fitting a couple of cases back there. Just show, close that back down with the handle. Take a better look at the diffuser area. Cool little design with the centre um, reflector light there as well. LED rear lights as well. jump in. So I've got a lot more to show you on the inside now. 
including some of the tech stuff, Bose Hi-Fi. So, let's have a look around then at what we've got in here. The VXR embroidery on the seat headdress. Again, as I said before, we've got the mixture of the suede and the leather um, seat materials. Armrest here. Good storage box, USB port, charger socket as well. Glove, bo um, glove box. Um, well, while we're here, might as well go to the glove box. I've got some stuff in here, but decent glove box storage. I've got my cameras and all the information about the car in there. And lots of this carbon trim, which looks very nice, sort of through this whole setup in the center console here. The driver performance style I talked about before. You can also press and hold the center button to turn traction off. And I can guarantee you, if you do that in this car, in a safe environment, you will have a lot of fun. I can already feel so much about how much play the car wants to do. Um, we've also got parking. The car can self-park itself. It has the full sort of parking control. Um, where it controls the steering, you would just be lightly pressing on the pedals and it would do all of that for you. Electronic handbrake. You've got this like metal plaque here with VXR8 written on it. And right above that, um, oil gauge uh, dial and presumably the supercharge charger pressure of some sort. Um, all the climate control settings, dual zone. I'm going to turn it on again. So we can take a look at all of these things in a little bit more detail from here. It's an HSV embroidery here, holding special vehicles on the uh, suede finish style um, piece there. And right, the radio's on. This is all default, I haven't been playing with it yet. Um, so we've also got seat heating controls up here for both driver and passenger, um, air conditioning, fans and vents. So we've got this eight inch touchscreen standard on the car. If we go to home, see we can go into what we're playing now, EDI with the cool new Vauxhall logo. I should have shown that. Actually, it's, it's placed in a couple of places on the car, there in the software and here as well with the Vauxhall Griffin with the helmet, which obviously demonstrates the sort of track and driver focus points behind this car. So we've got navigation. I agree, I'm not going to use it while I'm driving. Um, if we go back to home, we've got the phone, AM, FM, DVD, USB. It's more, a whole load of uh, different sort of standard kind of settings you get. Um, but I want to get back to, oh no, that's not what I wanted, apologies. I want to get back to the first menu and go into EDI show you this stuff in a little bit more information and detail. So the screen I showed you while I was driving, um, where even if I'm stationary and I like press the brake, it shows, does it do accelerator pedal? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Watch the revs, hear the noise. Um, we've got this power and air intake. Can you, gosh, you can change all sorts of dials. I think the best way to demonstrate this is uh, just by doing. Goodness, there are so many different things you can show. Um, I've gone around. Can you do, is that the same settings on that side? Yeah, same stuff. So you can choose your two favorite dials, I suppose, to see on that screen. Here, we're looking at fuel usage over the last 125 kilometers. Um, so I guess I've not been very, oh no, I have been quite efficient. There's liters per 100 kilometers, this is the other way around. Um, whoever was driving it here, which was before me, was not looking after the car very well. Um, stopwatch settings, lap timers, that's all track telemetry stuff. Um, saving the logging. Oh yes, of course, it logs everything to a uh, data point in here um, on the top. And you can get your data off that later, later on from here. And this shows you the degrees of slip if you were drifting the car right now, which would be a little bit of a dangerous thing to do because I'm in a gravel car park. And G-forces all around. There's so many settings here. Oh yeah, this is the one that shows you how you oversteer or understeer angles. Okay, so for people who love this stuff, you have an unbelievable number of settings and displays and things you can look at. This is crazy. And we're back to the start. Right, okay. Um, so that's quite a lot of fun. There is an endless selection of stuff to go through. Um, I'm just going to put my seatbelt on so I can see on the uh, driver's dial. Obviously here we've got 
the rev counter and the speedometer, rev counter on the left, speedometer on the right. Um, and if I press the menu button here on the stalk, we get a few different screens we can look at on here as well. Um, a lot of the similar stuff to what we were looking at before. Uh, I've gone all the way around. Um, but a couple of different panels we can look at. And then down here, we've got the setting for the head-up display. I'm sure you can just about see that just to move it around. Um, lights and uh, main beam and headlights and stuff. And then mirrors, windows all of that stuff you expect in this sort of piano black kind of trim that contrasts actually quite nicely through the middle here um, around the, uh, the carbon fibre. So it's not a, not a bad interior at all. Some uh, random stuff, sunglasses holder. <laughs> um, we're in England. Well, actually, I am wearing sunglasses right now, even though it's not sunny because it was sunny earlier. Um, lights and all that jazz. Big mirror. Might just quickly jump in the back and check out the space. So obviously the seat I'm sat in right now is in my sort of preferred driving position. If I get in the back, you can see how much room there is here. Just to get a feel for this. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty comfortable. Actually, this seat's quite good as well. You can see there's good side support. I imagine the middle's not the most comfortable in the world, but that can be the problem with the person who sat in the middle at the back. And uh, I'm rest as well. With storage box. Burning as I go. Speakers back here behind the headrests. That's quite a nice view out there, I think, through the centre console. Right. So, I've quite enjoyed my little drive in this car. I'm glad the guys persuaded me to have it out for a little go. But in short, what you're looking at here is the Holden Gen F GTS brought over to the United Kingdom as the Vauxhall VXR8 GTS, a 576 brake horsepower family saloon with sporty driving characteristics for £55,000. The least expensive entry to the 500 brake horsepower plus club. So yeah, like I said at the beginning, a little bit different from lots of the supercars I drive, but it's becoming a crazy world the way it's possible for these performance figures to be achieved and so much more accessible than they necessarily are through the very top end. I suppose we need that very top end to push the developments and make it all possible but this has been quite a fun drive for me um, quite enjoyed it looking forward to heading back off with it now I hope you've enjoyed some early thoughts and taking a look around it and seeing this car in a little bit more detail so thank you very much for watching and make sure you're subscribed check out all the other videos on the Shmi 150 channel with plenty more very interesting cars that's it for now though I'll catch up with you again very soon cheers I'm going to be jumping on board the Delta Red 675 LT with Rob, my instructor. And it looks breathtaking. I was hoping for something.